Hey everyone, and we are back in the garage uh, to do another project here, but this one is going to be a lot more simple than doing our bowls. Instead, we're going to do uh, one of the very first uh, projects you can actually do while um, doing woodworking, and that is making a pen. And there are all different types of pens out there. You can make fountain pens, but we are going to focus on your basic ballpoint pen. Now, the pen I'm going to make today is going to be a typical slim line pen. So for this project, you're going to need, of course, a pen kit, which will include all of the pieces needed to assemble. And this kit includes uh, a barrel, sometimes will be two barrels, depending on what type of pen you're using. In this case, I have two barrels. And I also have the, the twist mechanism uh, for, uh, with the refill. So um, Sometimes it'll be cap, sometimes it'll be a twist. So be sure you know what kind of kit you're getting so you know what you're getting yourself into. Of course, we have uh, the cap and we also have the, the, the center band for the center of the pen and of course the head of the pen. But uh, for now, we are going to be taking the two barrels. For now, those are the only two things you need from this kit. The others will come later. The other items we're going to need are pen blanks. And you can have uh, wood or acrylic. Doesn't matter which one. Uh, in this particular case, I'm going to be using ash. And I'll do another pen for you using uh, acrylic. Now, th this is actually um, a, 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 poly, um, a poly blend. So, uh, so it's not exactly acrylic, but it, it, it works the same way. It's uh, poly resin. Uh, that's because that, uh, not, it's mostly black, but also has uh, white swirls in it to so try to give it a little pattern. But uh, yeah, it acts the same way as your typical acrylic blank, so it doesn't really matter with that. You're also going to need drill bits. Now your drill bits are going to depend on what, what kit you're working on. It can range anywhere from 7 millimeters all the way up to 15, 30 seconds, and you're going to be getting into some weird measurements. Um, there's even ones on... Uh, that have a letter assigned to it instead of a, a fraction of, a, um, of an inch. Uh, but again, um, look up, see what your pen requires. Um, in this case, it's a seven millimeter, so it's not that big. And um, usually the smaller size ones are gonna be okay for these three quarter inch uh, square blanks. If you're going to go anywhere close to like three, three eighths of an inch, you're likely going to require a bigger blank uh, to avoid um, causing it to fracture because I've had that problem in the past. Um, your drill is also going to require a barrel trimmer. Now you could have the option of having it specific to a, a particular size, or you can get one of these universal uh, trimmers which can cut down on any size. And uh, we're also going to need uh, bushings. Now the bushings are uh, that I require for this pen kit are already on the lathe, but your uh, bushings are going to be specific to the kit that you are using. In this case, this is a basic slimline pen, so all my bushings are going to be seven millimeters. And, um, if you get a, a pen blank that has uh, different size bushings, uh, you want to take a look at the chart and see where they lay um, as far as where they should go on the, on the lathe. But those bushings are not only there to hold your, your pen blanks in place, but they're also a reference to uh, where they should be level uh, when you are finished uh, turning the blank. Uh, we're also going to need some finishing touches, and uh, you have the option of uh, different ones. Uh, but for this, we are going to go with uh, CA glue. Um, now you can uh, use um, 
thick um, glue, which is mainly used to put in the, um, the barrels into the blanks. Uh, but you really uh, need, at the minimum, a medium and a thin uh, CA glue finish. And that will give it a glossy look. And of course you're going to need sandpaper. Um, we're going to use the sandpaper and as well as the micro mesh. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get started here. So like I said, we're going to use a, um, the ash pen blank this time. And, and I'll show you the, uh, the poly resin as well. But we're going to show you this first. Now the first thing we're going to do is that uh, we're going to take, we're going to take a, a barrel and we're going to line it up with that pen blank. Now we want it to, to be just inside of the blank and then we're going to draw a line. If I can find my, I left my pen on the other side of the garage. But while I'm getting that, um, you are going to um, draw a line just above that, just above that barrel, and it's going to be right about, we're going to say right about here, and we're going to take the other pen blank and just make sure that it sticks with it, and yes, they do, so they will, they will both fit, so, so now that we are clear on that, we now need to cut the, the pen blank uh, right down the middle there, so we have two separate, so we have two separate ones. But before you do that, now if now if your pen blank does not require it be separated into two pieces, you should be all fine and dandy. But if you are going to cut it in half into two separate pieces, what you want to do, draw another line. You want to draw an arrow on both sides of the blank. Now the reason for this is so you can keep the grain aligned so for when you put it on the lay so that uh, it doesn't look um, out, um, out of alignment when you assemble the whole pen. So like I said we are going to um, cut this down the middle and um, you have um, different methods of cutting but in this case I'm going to go to the bandsaw to cut this in half. So I'm going to uh, move you closer if I can. Yeah, I gotta get a new tripod. But uh, so, so we are going to put this on here. Now I'm gonna move my uh, fence to align it up with with the saw blade. And as usual, you know, just be careful. Keep your hands away from. Uh, from the blade, and uh, we already have the, uh, the the guard down, so we'll go ahead and cut. All right, it's that easy. So it's, I'm going to wait for the bandsaw to stop before I grab the other half. Okay, so. So now we have our two pieces, and now the next step is to drill through the center of it. And for that, uh, you have options. Uh, you can either take it to, to the lathe and use a drill chuck for that. Um, but since I don't have anything to hold this in place because uh, my jaw chucks are a little too big for it, I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way and use a drill. And I'm gonna take it over to the um, uh, to, uh, to the bench press that will come in later and so all right so the first thing I need is to put the uh, seven millimeter drill on so all right let me make sure that that drill is aligned up and it's on the forward position okay Right. Now, what's important here is that you have to keep What's important is that every once in a while you pull the drill back 
to get those chips out of there, you, know, you have to keep the hole clean uh, the entire way, otherwise your blank is going to shatter and you're going to have to start all over again. Now, um, now you can put an X on the, uh, on the, on the blank uh, for the center, but in this case, um, I'm not really too worried about that. I mean, there's plenty of space around it. I'm just going to... Yeah. So once again, uh, just go down on the blank slowly. And again, just pull out once in a while to clear away all the chips. that done. Alright, we will set this aside and uh, repeat the process for the other blank. And one other thing, um, if the drill gets hot, uh, you want to stop, let it cool down for a second before you continue. That one is all set, so now this is what our blanks should look like. So now, the next thing to do is to get the barrels inside um, of the blanks. But before we do that, uh, we are going to take uh, some 220 grit sandpaper. If I can find my 220 grit. Yeah, it's buried underneath everything and we are going to sand it down. Now this is to help uh, this is to help give the CA glue a better bond uh, to the uh, to the barrels. So we're just going to take some sandpaper and we're just going to twist the barrel all around it. Again you don't need to do much just just enough to rough up the outside. Do the same thing for the other. Okay. Now, um, before we uh, put the barrels into the, uh, the blanks, uh, I'm going to get I'm going to get myself uh, a rubber glove. It's because that, that CA glue um, cures really fast, and uh, it's, it's, you're going to get a hard time getting it off your off your skin. So we're going to put a rubber glove on just to protect our hand, and then we are going to take one half of our blank. So first thing to do, I'm going to put the barrel on my gloved hand. I'm going to put some CA glue on the outside and uh, you want to use thick CA glue it's, uh, all right, and then we're going to insert it into the blank and we're going to twist it just to make sure that it is spread evenly and I'm just going to push it down just a little bit more. Very good. And we're just gonna, um, and if you want, if you don't want to wait, you can use activator. You 
try to speed up the process and let it cure faster. All right, now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. We're going to put the barrel on our gloved hand. We're going to put CA glue on the outside. And then we're going to re do the same thing with the other blank. And we're just going to twist it in. And I'm just going to push it down just a little more. Very good. And uh, same thing if you want to use activator, you can do that. Okay, so now we got uh, the, the barrels inside. Next thing to do is to trim the blanks using our barrel trimmer. And what we're going to do, uh, and by the way, I can take my glove off now. I'm going to change my drill bit and go over to the uh, barrel trimmer. Now, so what we're going to do is that, um, now I would, I'd rather use this on my bench press, that way I have a, a better grip on the, on the pen blank, so I'm just going to take it back over to the bench press. So what we're aiming for here, and I'm going to move you back over to the, the, to the press, what we're aiming to do here is to trim the top of that barrel or the, the blank rather, um, until we have the blank just flush with, with the barrel. And you don't want to go too deep. You don't want to trim that, that barrel as well. Otherwise you're going to affect the length of the pen, which is going to make things difficult on the assembly. So all you have to do is just insert it into the barrel and then start trimming. Yeah, check every once in a while and see if it's flush. If not, continue. And just a little bit more. And, and that's good. Now we're going to flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. blank is ready. I will do the same thing with the other end blank. So this, whoops, I'm a little too close. So this is what your blanks should look like after they are trimmed. All right, so now that we got uh, those done, and uh, I just need to check uh, the other side. Let's see. Now, all right, so next thing, we're gonna take it over to the lathe and uh, start putting it together. Okay, so now we're at the lathe and one other piece of equipment that you need with a lathe is a pen mandrel. Now, the pen mandrel is what will hold up the pen blank while you are turning it. So, now like I said, you need bushings in order to turn your pen blank. And for this project, all the bushings are going to be 7 millimeters. So it has to go in this order. 
your first bushing, your first pen blank, your second bushing, your second blank, and in this, and you want to make sure that they are lined up. Remember those arrows that we put up earlier? Yeah, we have to make sure that they are lined up. And finally, the, the third bushing, and then we are going to seal it all up together and put the nut on at the end. So your mandrel should look like this. So, so one last thing you need to do is take your tailstock and put it up to the mandrel. Lock down your tailstock and you're just going to put a little bit of pressure from the tailstock, just enough to secure it in place. If you put too much pressure on it, it's going to cause the, the mandrel to bend and you're not going to have a uniform pen. So we're going to move uh, the tool rest right up there and we're going to turn just to make sure that it doesn't touch. It's just grazing my tool rest, so I'm just going to pull it back just a little bit. And we're going to turn it by hand just to make sure it's clear of the tool rest it is. Now for, for this process, uh, I'm going to put the, the lathe in the high gear. You usually have to see me put this in the medium gear, but for this case, because that we're dealing with a small project here, this is going to go all the way up to the, to the third gear, high gear. And as always, you are going to need your safety equipment. So I'm going to get my respirator and face shield. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give me a second to get everything together. And uh, so as far as what tools uh, you're going to use, uh, you can use either high-speed steel or you can use carbide cutters. It does not matter which one you use. Now, if you use the carbide cutters, uh, we would recommend using a square cutter uh, with, a, um, with a radius, and, as that one is more forgiving. But for this, I'm going to use my, my gouge. I'm going to line it up just to make sure it is center. And really, you don't need anything bigger than a spindle gouge. Now, um, with my limited um, tools here, I only have my bowl gouge and my, um, and my uh, scraper, uh, but a bowl gouge should, should do uh, just fine because it, it'll, it pretty much performs uh, similar to a spindle gouge. Um, it's just that if you decide to make V cuts, um, it's not going to give you that as much radius as you want. So like, like I said, you really don't need anything bigger than a spindle gouge. But I'm just doing bowl gouge just because that's what I have. Alright, so um, we're going to, I need to test this to make sure that we are okay. So we're going to go up to 3000 RPM. Okay. All right. So, um, so our goal here is um, first thing we're going to do is, is that we got to remove the corners. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So, so let me get my equipment on, and uh, we'll go ahead and round it out.
see if we, uh, well, it's not quite rounded out, but it's getting there. Uh, let me see. And, yeah, I'm just making sure that my, the grain's lined up, because I had noticed that the, because I had noticed that the, uh, the blank had stopped a couple of times, but uh, for the most part, it's pretty much still lined up. So, um, so after, um, like I said, it still needs to be uh, rounded a little bit. There's some still some flat spots, but once you get it rounded out, if you can, if you're dealing with a bigger pen blank, you can start making your shapes. Um, yeah, you can make your V cut, you can make your coves or whatever. But like I said, this is a, this is just a basic pen blank, so we're just gonna try to keep it level. Once again, we want to be just a tiny bit um, outside of the bushing, um, so we still got a ways to go. But we, again, just just outside of the bushing is all we need for this pen. Just in case that there's anyone that has carbide cutters, I'll, I'll show you that as, as well. I'm gonna, uh, switch over to my uh, square cutter. Yeah, this is just to show you that uh, it's just as easy. Just to demonstrate to you that you can do that too, but I'm gonna go back to my gouge. Check to make sure that uh, the. Uh, I need to realign my. I need to realign the. Uh, the grains. Yeah, because I did it again. It's moved everything on me. Yeah, that's better. All right. 
you know, you know, if that happens, um, you know, in this case, ash is pretty easy to, uh, to realign, but just make sure that uh, there's enough um, pressure from the tailstock to keep them in place. All right, so we're just a little bit outside of the, uh, the bushings. So now it is time to go to sanding. And for this, uh, I'm trying something a little bit different here. Uh, we are using a mesh-based uh, sandpaper. So uh, what I got is, the, is this pack here. It gives me five different grits going from 180 up to 600, which is what we're planning to turn it with. So. I'm going to take my 180 grit and for this part we're going to turn the speed down and let's see uh, we're going to turn it to 1500 and what we're doing is that with the 180 grit we're going to finish it off and try to get it flush with uh, the bushings. Yeah, sometimes the, uh, it may not be the best option, so we're going to go to the uh, old-fashioned um, sandpaper. I'm going to go grab that real quick. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll do it with a regular sandpaper. We'll uh, go to the other grits uh, as soon as we're done. Um, sanding this down.
sure that they are flush with the with the bearings. And let's see, just a tiny bit more. And I accidentally hit the reverse switch on there. That's not what I wanted. And I'm just gonna wait for it to reset. There we go. satisfied with that. Now before you go up into any of the other grits, we're going to take the same sandpaper and we're going to um, sand it down uh, linear. This is to remove any uh, radial scratches that may show up from you uh, sanding down while the lathe was running. And in case anyone asks about the other grits, the first grit that you have is, uh, is like I said, it's more to make it flush with the bearings, but uh, the other ones are more to polish. Okay, looks good. All right, so now we can go on uh, to the other grits and um, yeah, these will, uh, on the mesh, will work better. Uh, next up is 240, then we go to 320, then 400, then 600.
All right, so now. All right, so now the next thing to do is to, we gotta clean that up a little bit. So I'm gonna grab myself a, a paper towel and we're gonna grab our mineral spirits and we will uh, uh, wipe it down real quick. I just gotta uh, find my screwdriver to open that up. Uh, there it is. Okay, so. Yeah, we just need a little dab of this and then uh, we'll, and uh, we don't even need to turn the, uh, the lathe on. We just need to uh, turn it by hand. All right, so now we're just gonna turn by hand and just give it a little wipe. to it. Okay. I'm just going to check the whole thing. Okay. All right. So now, now is the time to put on our finish. Now for this part, um, let me put this away. Now you have a, you have a choice as to what finish you want to use. In this case, I'm going to show you how to do the CA glue. Now, that it would be a good time to change out the bearings into plastic non-stick bearings because if you get any CA glue on, on these bearings here, you have a risk of it getting stuck to your pen blank and uh, you're going to have to uh, try to vice grip it out or use uh, uh, CA thinner. But uh, let me grab the materials and um, I'll be right back. Okay, so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use a paper towel for this. You need a, just a clean one. And we're gonna set the lathe uh, down to the low setting. We're put it in the low gear and we're gonna put this all the way down to about 200 RPM, just so you don't get any glue splashing around. But we're gonna, the, we're gonna put seven to 10 coats of CA glue on. Now the first coat we're going to use thin CA glue just to make sure it gives it a good base. So we're going to turn this on and make sure it's at 200 RPM. Two forty close enough. And uh, with the with the paper towel underneath, just drip a little bit of CA glue, just a few drops, and then just rub it in. Same thing with the other blank, just a few drops and just rub it in. And want to make things faster, uh, you can use the activator too. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And uh, you just just a light spray is all you need. Yeah, you don't need that much, otherwise it's gonna fog up. So once you've done that, we will go to the to the medium CA glue. So we'll re repeat the process. And uh, just as a reminder, you wanna be doing this with your rubber gloves on because you don't want this stuff on your skin because it will dry fast. Okay. We're going to repeat the process uh, seven to ten times.
Yeah, and, and you, you see why I say put gloves on? Stuck to my glove. You know another reason why you want gloves on there? Because uh, when, it, when it gets on your glove, it feels like fire. So yeah, yeah, always wear gloves when working with CA glue. Alright, I'm gonna check the uh, check it to see uh, it should be dry every time you put a coat on. Yeah, I'm gonna put a couple more coats on as soon as I put another glove on um, because that glue got stuck to my glove. Okay, I believe that should be it. Okay. I 
I'm just going to make sure that my bushings are not stuck. Yeah, if you're not using, uh, yeah, yeah, if you're not using the, the plastic bushings, just uh, stop every once in a while, separate the bushing, just make sure that they don't get stuck to each other. But uh, we have one more step on the lathe before assembly. And we have to sand it down one more time, this time with the micro mesh. So I'm gonna put, put this back on as I just dropped my CA glue. And we're gonna tighten it down. Okay, so let me go get the micro mesh and I will be right back. All right, for this step, uh, we're gonna put the lathe back up again. We're gonna put it to the medium gear. And we're gonna put it up to about, see I'm gonna go no higher than, I'm gonna go no higher than 1500. So micro mesh, I believe I've shown you these before. These nine different pads, they act like sandpaper, but they are really, really fine. They range from 1200 grit all the way up to 12,000 grit. So we're gonna start with the brown pad, which is 1200, and we're just gonna sand it down to make sure it is uniform. But make sure you dip them in water first before you start sanding it down. moving. Do not keep it in one spot, otherwise you're going to burn uh, the micro mesh. Check it real quick just to make sure it is smooth. Um, if not, we'll continue with this and then we'll move down to the, to the green pad. And we're gonna do it just a little bit more. So now, I'm satisfied with that. So now we're going to take that same pad, we're gonna hand turn, and we're gonna do the same thing we did with the sandpaper earlier, and that's to uh, rub it laterally to get rid of any radial scratches. Now we'll go over to the green pad, the next step down.
wash off a little bit of that from last from my last project. Because this is one of the coarser grits, we're going to repeat the process and rub laterally. All right, now we'll go on to the gray pad. sanding one more time. And it's really the last time you need to do that because the rest of the, uh, the grits are more for polishing. So we're gonna go through the rest of them uh, with the lathe on and don't worry about lateral sanding. So we'll go to the light gray pad.
lift the blue pad. Finally, the magenta pad, aka 12,000 bricks. Okay, and there is one other thing you can do. Now, if you're satisfied with uh, what you got here, you can stop and take it off the lathe, but I'm just gonna move my stuff around and get the other thing I'm gonna show you. You can, you can um, polish it even further uh, with some plast um, plastic polish. Uh, this came with my kit. Uh, the instructions say to use the satin first and then the gloss. So we're going to turn down the speed just a little bit. I'm going to put the, the satin in first. I'm just going to take a little dab of it. We're going to turn the lathe back on and of course I have my face shield on me, uh, just to make sure nothing splashes. I'm just going to take some of that polish and pour it all over. Until all of it is gone. Now don't worry if you get it on the bushings, it'll be okay. yet uh, there is uh, one other thing we need to do before we start the assembly process and that's any glue ACA glue that may have uh, that may be on the end of the blank because okay, uh, that can occur you want to take your uh, 1200 um, micro mesh and you're going to rub it on the end of the barrel and just 
do it in a twisting in a twisting motion just to get that extra CA glue off. And then you gotta do that, do that on all the sides. And just to take all that, take all that off. And just don't go too hard on the micro mesh. Let the let the mesh do the work. And uh, by the end of it, you should have a flush finish. So this is what your uh, barrels should look like now. So like I said, uh, we're done with the lathe, but we are not done uh, with our project. Next is assembly. All right, from this point on out, all the instructions uh, are going to vary depending on what pen kit you have used. This is for the seven millimeter only. So be sure to look at the instruction manual before proceeding with the assembly. For, th uh, for this, uh, the instructions say to uh, put the uh, finial cap on with the clip. And I have to figure out which uh, one I should use. And I'm going to use uh, this end. And we are going to take our finial cap and our clip, all right, it's going to go through like this, and we're gonna put it through one end, and then we're gonna put it on our bench press. And it's important to line it up properly before you start pressing, because you don't want it to go at an angle. And then you can press, and your clip is in. The next thing uh, to do, we're going to take our twist mechanism and we're going to insert it into the other side. Uh, first, I need to make sure that um, everything is lined up and then we're going to press it down and All right, so it's a press to the, uh, the second ring. So I'm gonna push this out, and then we're gonna press it inward just a little bit. Again, making sure that everything is centered up properly. Okay, and then we're gonna test it out by inserting the To, we need to actually put in the, the nib for this part, so I'm gonna, we're gonna actually remove the uh, twist mechanism. I've got it a little bit backwards. Yeah, so yeah, if you make a mistake, that's okay. Just uh, should actually be able to push in the nib since the twist mechanism is pretty tight. So you can, yeah, the nib should come in with no problem. But the nib should be going in first. going to put the refill in and see where it's at. Uh, okay, so I got in the full outward position as you can see. 
It is not in the correct position, so I got to take the uh, the refill out. So we're going to take the refill out of there, and we're going to push in a little more. And this is more of a trial and error. Okay, and we're going to twist down and. It is still not there yet. And I mean, it's getting there, but it's not far out enough, so we're gonna take the refill out again. And we're gonna push in a little more. We'll do it one more time. Insert. That's better. That's what it should look like. And so you see, with the twist me mechanism, that's what it should look like. All right, so now we got to... So now the next thing to do is to uh, put in our, our band. I, I just put it in for you. And then lining up the, the grain. Yeah, lining up the grain, uh, push in the remainder. And I'm just going to twist it just a little more. And there you go. There is our new pen. Made of ash, finished with CA glue, and just what we were planning on. Now, like I said, uh, say, uh, you can do the same thing with the, with the acrylic. Uh, of course, the only difference is that um, you don't need the CA glue uh, to finish this because it is already plastic, so you really don't need to do that. But like I said, um, the like I said, you can use any um, any type of um, wood or or acrylic. Doesn't matter which one. And I'm gonna move you up just a little bit more. But it's a pretty easy easy project to do. You can you can buy these at any uh, wood craft store. Uh, but there's many different versions of them. Uh, like I said, this is the simple seven millimeter version. There are more complex ones out there, and I'll show you one of them a little bit later, which is the fountain pen. That one's a lot more complex, so just keep an eye out for that. But for now, uh, I believe this will be going out um, onto my Etsy um, store. Uh, I'll be selling some of my uh, crafts here very soon. So uh, until then, I will see you guys later.